This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us again. We have some great guests, a co-host today, who's from the ISC Squared in Hawaii. And we're going to be talking about the Equifax hack, and we're going to do a couple of rants on that. But first, we're going to talk to one of the business leaders here in the community. It does a lot of contracting, a lot of cybersecurity, has a lot of community outreach. That's Booz Allen Hamilton. And with us today, uh, lead scientist and data analyst, Chalmer Lowe from Booz Allen. Welcome, man. Well, good to have you aboard. Aloha. Appreciate, appreciate right the on. chance to be here. Excited. Uh, yep. Where are you from? How'd you get here? What's your history? Okay. Uh, originally came from the East Coast, uh, transferred to Hawaii about three years ago. Um, I was requested by Booz Allen Hamilton to come out here and, and uh, work on one of the teams that's located out new here. New to the islands. Okay. So totally new to the island. As yeah. um, soon as I got here on the island, I looked around for people like myself, people who had a cybersecurity background and or who had kind of a programming slash data analysis background. Um, found a number of those folks in the community, but I found kind of a, an opening, a gap, I guess you could say, uh, in particular the programming community related to Python, which is strongly used for data analysis. So I founded a, an organization out here called Pi Hawaii, and we do a lot of uh, community outreach, trying to help people understand the benefits and the usefulness of Python to solve problems, to automate work, and uh, to do data analysis. Well, that's great. And, and you work for Booz Allen, so tell us a little bit about Booz Allen Hamilton, B-A-H. Booz Allen Hamilton, it's a consulting and technology firm. Uh, been around for about 100 years now, a little over 100 years. Um, got a strong position in several different markets, cybersecurity being one of them, um, analysis, solutions engineering, um, defense, and the commercial market. Myself, I've done work for uh, Booz Allen Hamilton in the commercial market, working with financial organizations to help them evaluate their cybersecurity posture and or respond to, to things. Um, I've also worked in the government sector and a variety of other areas of Booz Allen Hamilton, predominantly focused on data analysis and uh, mentoring and coaching folks on how to use Python to, to solve data analysis challenges. So why Python? What is it about Python? I have to emphasize this is P-Y-T-H-O-N. Mm -hmm. P-Y, so Pi Day is P-Y. Yep. day, right? So tell us so, a little bit about Python. Python is programming language. Um, it is an incredibly powerful language from the standpoint of you can do a wide variety of things with Python. Um, it runs much of the foundation behind Google, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. I mean, you know, the heavyweights in, in, in the social media world are relying on Python to, to run much of their infrastructure. If you've seen Big Hero 6, you've seen Star Wars, all those computer generated graphics, that all resides on an on underlayment of Python. Um, it's installed by default on just about every Linux and Unix system out there. So if you want to use Python, it's available for you. It's also installed on Macs, right? Right, because Mac has a BSD Unix, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, Underlayment, mutation. Yeah. It's called uh, Darwin. Yep. That's their distro, mm -hmm. and that's underneath the, the fancy GUI. So yep. Mac's got that by default. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And Python is, by design, intended to be easy to read, easy to write, and easy to understand. Um, I'll give you one example. In the UK, in the last year, the BBC has released a product called Microbit. It's a small piece of hardware. It runs Python on it. And that was distributed to all of the 11-year-old students in the UK. A million students in the UK are studying Python and making micro bits, turn lights on, run motors, detect things. The micro bits got an accelerometer in it and a compass and it's got buttons and it's got a little LED display and these kids are just tearing it up wow. with Python, right, at the age of 11. Cool so. and scary. Cool and scary, yes. Simultaneously. Absolutely. But that's a symbiotic relationship. We've got to kind of deal with that. We've got to educate our kids and then hope they don't go nuts. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And turn to the dark side. Turn yeah, to the dark well, side. okay. Yeah, let's talk about hats. We've got white hat, gray hat, black hat. And we want them to stay white hat, mm -hmm. ethical hacking mm -hmm. at the best, right? And I don't want them to wander off with the situational morals thing, yep. right? So tell us a little bit more about what you do to get this into the community. So. In the community, I do several things with Python, and I do a variety of things also with uh, cybersecurity. So kind of cover both of those issues. Um, with Python, I said I run Pi Hawaii. Um, Booz Allen Hamilton has been a long-term sponsor of that. And we have meetings every two weeks, and we 
as a community service, offer up um, beginner sessions and advanced sessions and puzzle solving sessions. All the same Python. time, or do you? We do them all in, in the same time frame, okay. so that way the new folks who've never played will start to see a little bit of the art of the possible when they see what we what we demo and show to the advanced students. And then when we, as a group, solve puzzles, we talk about how do we solve a puzzle, and we write the code on the screen. Everybody gets to see it run. We make the the puzzle work, and we get an answer, and then we walk through how do we improve this? How do we make the code more efficient? How do we make it um, take up less space on the screen in terms of like reducing the number of lines of code? How do we simplify it so it's easier to read, easier to understand, those kinds of things. So you're a true programmer, and I know this because I came from 20 years of programming. Mm -hmm. It's never done. Yeah, right? it's never done. It's never done. You're always coming back, I can make it better, I can make yep. it better. But I, I was drinking a beer when I did that one, I can make it better. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem with coding. But it's, it's great, you, you put in critical analysis, mm -hmm. critical thinking in there, so you're solving a problem, you're kind of taking a word problem, putting it into code, and that's what happens in the real world, right? Mm -hmm. You go out there and you get a job, someone says, I need to solve this problem, I don't know code. Absolutely. How do I solve this problem? I need to do X, and you say, hey, I know Python, it's right here, let's do it. And, and so that's what you teach people, right? Yep. You, know, you have an, a couple of events coming up. You want to talk about that? Sure. So in terms of you know, cybersecurity, the kinds of things that, that I like to be engaged in, I like to uh, work with folks and engage their minds. Um, so Booz Allen Hamilton is sponsoring a couple of events that are really geared toward helping people learn and helping people to grow their skills. Uh, the first one is going to be a cyber networking and hacker trivia night. Um, we're going to put on this, this hacker trivia event uh, try and get folks from across the cybersecurity community, both folks who are new to that community and folks who are, you know, gray beards and have a strong understanding. Try to get them all in a room. They'll socialize, and we're going to present them with hacker trivia questions, right? Um, things focused on the entire spectrum of cybersecurity skills, whether it be forensics, reverse engineering, um, malware, the history of, of uh, cybersecurity. You go all the way back to freaking. As far back right. as, as we Voice can, right? Voice technology too, okay, yeah. cool. Um, Captain Crunch whistles yep. and stuff, yeah. right? <laughs> um, so we got all these, these questions, and you can get together in teams of up to six, and we can help you form a team at the event. If you don't have one, if you've got a group of folks you want to come with, that's fine too. Oh, neat. And you uh, basically compete for uh, for props and prizes and uh, bragging rights. So that's going to be on the 11th of October. Um, another event that that I run out here, it's focused on Python. We've got a Python programming competition. It's kind of a capture the flag style of event, and we. We present puzzles to folks, much like the ones that we solve at Pi Hawaii, mm -hmm. and we just cut them loose. Pizza's on the table and a bunch of Red Bulls and monsters, and you have three hours. Oh, that's so we have yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have three hours. You solve as many of these puzzles as you possibly can, get as many points as you can. And that'll be on, I think, the 13th of October. And then on the 14th, and this is more cybersecurity related, we're going to do almost an identical thing. We're going to have a capture the flag. I throw a bunch of puzzles out there, but they're puzzles focused on forensics or reversing or malware engineering. Um, and you have to solve these puzzles and get those points. And again, there's going to be plenty of plenty of food, plenty of stuff to keep you keep you alert. We got a good um, sponsor. Booz yeah, Allen. Booz Allen. Yeah, right. They've been very generous to try and you know set these things up. We want to have folks in the community who are cognizant of cybersecurity risks and able to support the community in protecting ourselves from these cybersecurity risks. I like I mean, that. Without without a good it's talent pool, right? We are all teach a man to fish, mm -hmm. right? That's that's the philosophy. Mm -hmm. So now, if I if I was listening to the show because we do podcast also, sure. So we don't have any visuals, but if you could tell people where to go to see all this information on a website and maybe get in on a mailing. List, so you can find out when the events are coming in when you blast those out to people. Gotcha. Um, I tell you what, I will, uh, if possible, send you several uh, URLs because okay. they are posted on Eventbrite. Um, the, the ones you sent me this morning? Yeah. Okay, I got those. Is, uh, is there possibly the Booz Allen Hamilton website has these links? Booz Allen corporate website does not have these links. Oh, but that's we will too bad. Get you something. Okay, we need to sponsor you a website. Yeah. So you have a Chalmer Low, Booz Allen Hamilton, <laughs> Python, cybersecurity website. Absolutely. That, that's what we need because this is good stuff. You're getting out there in the community. Like, can you uh, give us some examples of people that you've had on these events that have actually gone on to support the community doing these, these activities, cyber, Python? So, well, I'll give you an example of one thing that we did this summer. It's not quite folks who've come out of these events, but it's, it's something that Booz Allen was engaged in. We had uh, 12 interns from uh, UH 
uh, Manoa and from West Oahu come, and they worked at Booz Allen Hamilton over the summer. So just so the, the folks out there who are not in Hawaii know, mm -hmm. both of those universities are four-year institutions. Mm -hmm. uh, one's research-based, one is applied-based, and they're both part of the uni University of Hawaii system, and they're on opposite ends of Oahu, mm -hmm. right? UH West is out in the Kapolei area. UH Manoa is the first UH that we had, and it's out here in the Honolulu area. area. So just so they know where they're coming from. So sure. Took from those two. And you said you had another intern from someplace else, Toledo, Ohio? Yeah, we had uh, a young lady, Ashley. She came and joined us from Toledo, Ohio. Oh, so. woman in cyber. Yep. Good, thank you. Absolutely. God. Yeah, right. Um, and actually, in our interns, we had a total of, I think, f uh, four women uh, in our intern program this year, which is pretty good. Four I had 12, 33%. Yeah. Yep. I mean, that's pretty good. Yep. Wow, pretty that's exciting. awesome. So when I first started, maybe it was like 0.01% <laughs> or something? Much. Yeah. So these, these interns were with us for about 10 weeks over the course of the summer, and they were part of what we call a Booz Allen Summer Games, and Booz Allen, um, you know, our desire to have interns come and work for us uh, caused us to put together the summer games type activities. The interns worked together, they created individual projects that were focused on our customers' needs, and then we flew all of these intern teams back to uh, Maryland, or back to Virginia, and they competed. They gave presentations on all their projects, and the two teams that we had out here in Hawaii did really, really well. One of those teams, our cyber team, actually made it into the finals out of about 80 different teams across oh, wow, all of Booz Allen. Great. So we were, we were pretty yeah. excited. Yeah, uh, that's University exciting. of Hawaii was yeah. representing. Nice, so nice that we can represent. You yeah. know, most people write pretty us exciting. off. That's right. Uh, yeah. it's, it's hard to believe, but uh, this little tiny state in the middle of the Pacific is actually on the forefront of some really dangerous stuff. <laughs> you know, we have some enemies on the Pacific rim here that, that we have to be cognizant of, mm -hmm. and there's a ton of military presence out on these islands. So this kind of stuff, cybersecurity, we're at the vanguard of the assault if something should happen. We need to know what's going on, yeah, and absolutely. this is really helping. Now, what else can you tell us before we uh, go to commercial? we got a couple of minutes here. Give us some, uh, some more info. One more item that's coming up in early October, it'll be on, I think, Tuesday the 4th of October. Um, here in Hawaii, the University of Hawaii and the Hawaii Business Roundtable host a, a conference every year called Future Focus. I think this is like the sixth or eighth year that they've done this. And at Future Focus, uh, they look at items that are going to impact Hawaii and the Pacific you know, for years to come. And every year they have something associated with cyber. And this year, again, they're going to have cyber. And part of what they're offering um, at this particular conference is they are hosting the kickoff of an organization that's going to be hopefully prominent and powerful in, in Hawaii called Cyber Hawaii. Uh, cyber Hawaii is essentially the local chapter of an organization called Cyber USA. Mm -hmm. And Cyber USA's mission is to improve community engagement, bring together educational resources, and improve prove the understanding of cyber and the resilience to cyber attack to members of the business and public and private communities. Build that awareness, maybe yeah. make, make a cyber network of these yeah. folks, right, so they can talk to each other, which is an important point, right? When you when you put somebody in, okay, let's let's be real, when we do our jobs, we're in a windowless room, <laughs> we're 66 degrees, you know, we're usually alone, right? You gotta get those people talking to other folks, yeah. right? Because that's when you share information. Hey, I saw this open source program has a hole in it, be sure to patch before this date or whatever and that can prevent bad things from happening. You know, Cisco has a system that automatically shares, but even though those networking or uh, that environment is sharing information, yeah. you still need the people, and you can yeah. learn things. Because yeah. you, you get blinders on a lot of times, yeah. where, where you think you're the only one trying to resolve this issue, and then you reach out to talk to some people, and all of a sudden you go, oh yeah, I'm doing the same thing. And then you start building the synergy, and, but there's also, with, among companies, there's also a fear of sharing things as well, because you have reputations to protect. Absolutely. Sure, and so proprietary information. Trying to get maybe, past yeah. that is, is a, a challenge as well. So we're going to go to commercial, but we're going to come back. That's a great segue, lead, segue into what we're going to rant about in just a minute. That's what I'm there for. I hope people are sharing more than Equifax did. Obviously, there wasn't a network to support those folks, but you know, mistakes happen, and we're going to rant. Uh, we're going to go to commercial, pay some bills. We'll be right back. Stay safe. Ted Rawson here, folks, your host on Where the Drone Leads, our weekly show at noon on Thursdays here on Think Tech, where we talk about drones, anything you to do about drones, drones, remotely piloted aircraft, unmanned air crystals, whatever you want to call them, emerging into Hawaii's economy, educational framework, and our public life. We talk about things associated with the use, the misuse, uh, technology, 
engineering legislation with uh, local experts as well as people from across the country. Please join us noon on Thursdays and catch the latest on what's taking place in the world of drones that might affect you. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. Again, I'm your host, Dave Stevens, and we're about to talk about the Equifax hack. And if you haven't heard about it, you should crawl out of that cave you're in because everybody heard about it. It affected 143 million people in the United States. That's basically the adult population of the United States of America. And we're gonna talk about how Equifax is handling that situation right now with Jeff Milford, the president of the ISC2 chapter uh, here in Hawaii, and Chalmer Lowe. Lead Scientist Data Analyst for Booz Allen Hamilton. Welcome back, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to give it to you, man. Okay. <laughs> this just in. Okay. It's not 143 million. And how many it's is it? It's 200 million. Oh. That's well, we have to, How many people do we have in the U.S.? That's that's like everybody. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's according to Visa and MasterCard. <laughs> they sent out a not public announcement. And if you follow security, Brian Krebs is the guy who stays on top of all this stuff. This is Krebs on security yep. dot Krebs org, on security. right? Security. He, the guy. Or is it dot com? I think it's dot com. It's Krebs on security. Krebs on security. Yeah, Brian look that Krebs. up. Yeah, Brian yeah, Krebs. Yeah. Um, so what he was reporting, and this this is a pattern that just drives me wild. Yeah. Because you get the announcement that says we may have been hacked. Really, you <laughs> may, you may have, have been hacked. hacked. <laughs> you wouldn't be announcing it if you hadn't been yeah, hacked. This is this is beyond possible. And right? then yeah. it, the numbers are always going to change. Yeah. For every breach. And if, listen, <laughs> listen to the timeline, okay, this, is, okay. this is what kills you. Okay, so on March 7th, there was a zero day exploit, which means the vendor doesn't know that there's a security bug in their software. Well, zero day means nobody should know about it. Except the hacker. Right, the so hacker there's no signature exploiting. for a virus scanner no. to catch this. No, right. It's, right. and it was seen in the wild on March 7th. Oh, so this has been observed yeah. on March 7th. On March okay. 7th. Uh, it has to do with Apache Struts for their web software. So this is a, a, a website software made by uh, Apache, o which is an open, open source, source. tool. So open source means it's free right. to the general public. There's a community supporting community it. Supported. But it's, it's free and you can use it. And this is protecting it. all of our credit information. <laughs> That's the gate to all right. of our data, yeah. <laughs> in, in their defense, the very next day, they released a patch. March 8th, there was a patch available. So the community a really patch supports, for Apache. right? They, they support, they the community mm -hmm. supports Apache, said, oh, a zero day, we're gonna take care of that. And care. they did within they 24 did. hours. Right. Okay. right, okay. Okay, so according to Equifax, which of course we can believe them. Uh, <laughs> Mid-May, sometime in mid-May was when the theft occurred. They didn't discover it until July 19th, uh -huh. which again follows the pattern of these breaches. Right. They didn't announce that they had been hacked until September 7th. What is, are they doing damage control? Are they trying to figure out how much, I guess they're trying to figure out how much was taken. Right, so and this is the much, incident response process. How right? much, how much Something occurred, what do we do now? And they gotta right. go through their process, right? Um, I think they're supposed to notify people before this. So they could have done their due so diligence. Too. And right. their executives should not have been selling stock in the meantime, which the, happened. The $2 yeah. million dollars worth of stock yeah. gets sold. And, then, and the, the defense for that was, well, we wouldn't do anything that obvious. I mean, it, it, it looks like insider trading. Yeah, it's that's exactly because it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it looks like a duck, sometimes yeah, that's a exactly. duck. Exactly. Yeah. Of course it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, and then, well, we're not going to burn all of our stock. Just you know, two million between the three of us. I, don't, I haven't checked on the stock, but I know right after this this was announced to the public, the stock tanked 13%. Yeah. So those people that sold some stock saved some serious money. Sure, they did. And, and the SEC is interested already, and I've already read that a new law firm is investigating this. So those three people, I think it's only three, yeah. uh, are being investigated already. Thank God someone's well, taken off the blinders and they're looking. Finally, maybe something's going to come of this because they're not, they're not regulated. 
I was reading the argument being made that, well, you can't penalize them because then that makes the other two companies targets. Really? Uh, They're already targets. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is this is the keys to the kingdom. This is a, so we should reiterate, this is the top three vendors in their industry for, for credit monitoring right. and, and risk management of, of users' All of information, our personal right? information. And we don't sign up for it. No. Nope. We go to apply for a loan or a credit card or something, and all of our information gets sent to them. We have no choice. We can't nope. opt out. No. Nope. They're the, the, the cornerstone to one of the trust factors in our financial mm -hmm. economy and our well-being here in the United States. Yeah. And one of them, 33% of this trust has just been removed and basically every adult in the in the United States has yeah. been affected and I, I think they actually handle multinational so there's a lot more people out there yeah right I, I can't believe that the executives of this company will let this happen okay it's one thing to be breached yep it's another thing not to let people know right away yep it's another thing totally to sell your stock before you announce then, then what did they do when they actually announced? They charged people for the credit freeze, <laughs> and then they, they're surprised that people rose up and got out the pitchforks. Let, let's discuss the credit freeze, right? The credit freeze is what is that, and why is that a good thing to do now that we've been hacked and we know our data is right. going, right? That's what that's at least a proactive step you can take to freeze your report so that somebody, in theory, can't see your credit report. If if a lender comes to them, they your credit report doesn't exist, it's frozen. They yeah. can't use it to open an account or get a loan or something like that. Now you can do this over the phone, right? Or you can mail it. Or you can thing. do it online yeah. if their servers are responsive again. <laughs> Um, they kind of had a little trouble with the with the response I would imagine, time, yeah, yeah. and some of the people on the phones. I think they had to put a bunch of people that weren't used to being customer support on the phones too, because there were a lot of stories going around. I would imagine the call volume went way but up. But what yeah. also went missing is the credit card data, the name, and the expiration date. So right there, you, you putting a credit freeze on is good, but if this starts getting sold on the dark web, people are still going to be able to buy things. So buy gift certificates, monitor your credit cash. report, your credit, um, your statements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you're using, and this this also can happen, uh, use uh, using a what do they call it? Debit card, credit debit, where it takes money right out of your bank <laughs> account. Mm -hmm. Yeah, monitor your bank account too. Oh yeah, because they can rip money right out of there yeah. too. And if you let it go on for too long, the chances of you getting that money back are just nil. N nil. Yeah. So, and one of the people pointed out uh, what I've traditionally done is once a year you can go get your three credit reports from annualcreditreport.com. That's always a good idea. Which somebody said, well, I get mine at one every four months, which is a really good idea because that's a closer monitoring of your right, financial right, situation. Right. But Brian Krebs again pointed out that annualcreditreport.com. Hmm. Guess what software it uses. Uh, Apache no stuff. Way. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. We're wow. hoping that it's been patched since. Then. I hope so. Um, yeah. Because uh. that's the one that the government recommends. Well, basically, it's the only one you can go to for your for your free credit reports. So, so we should point. We should emphasize. I think that there's uh, two types of people in countries and in companies. There's the people that run the country or the company, and mm -hmm. the people that work there. Mm -hmm. Right. So the people that work at Equifax are probably really good folks. Yeah. Like people that are running Equifax should be fired in my opinion. And the when is somebody blood sucking pay? lawyers that advise them to circle the wagon yeah. to charge people, that was wrong. That should not have happened. Yeah. They should have supported the people that you know, if you're gonna get hacked, at least do the right thing. Don't try to charge money. And gonna tell us about the terms of service. If you signed up for the free credit monitoring service, the terms of service. Oh, yeah, you waive your legal rights. Hidden in that language, yeah, right. you, you that, waive the rights of class everybody reads, action. of course. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's the best sleeping pill ever. Read it the is. terms of service sure. or something. And, and yeah, sign up sleep. for our free credit monitoring, and uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, you, you've signed away your, your rights completely. Right. To litigate. Yeah. What do you think about this? I mean, it's pretty crazy. Um, and you mentioned this is kind of international, right? So there were there were customers in Canada and in the UK affected, I believe, if I understand it correctly. Um, the the response time from the Apache Foundation, which runs just about all of you know the the internet, mm -hmm. um, was top notch. Twenty four yep. hours or so, they have this patch available, but. Part of the due diligence for any given company is to ensure that you are attempting to 
look for the patches, apply the patches, etc. Mm -hmm. And that is a process, don't get me wrong, because when a patch comes out, you don't want it to break everything you, you're, you're, right. you're running, you right? right? So you've got to do some testing, you've got to do dil to diligence and, and then apply the patches. Um, it doesn't sound like that occurred here, right? Well, there also doesn't seem to be layers. Yeah. You're supposed to do defense and depth. You're supposed to layer your security. This is one hack that got the keys to the kingdom. Unencrypted database. Unencrypted data. All the data. Probably some easy username and password, I'd imagine, also. Sure. Uh, admin, um, admin. Admin, admin. And so and if they. If what they about DLP? I, Where's so, the data loss prevention uh, yeah. in all this? <laughs> Credit card numbers follow a certain format. Right. There's 16 digits. Yeah. Unless the hacker was so. Well, I don't want to come up with that idea. <laughs> it. Yeah. Unless they chunked it somehow and then reassembled it later. They could do package shaping, sure. To slip it past some kind of DLP, but all these things exist now. These aren't future technologies to protect us. Hmm. And you get these guys that are paid millions of dollars a year, look at the target breach. For want of $500,000 worth of, of gear, they actually had in place, but they were outsourcing the log reads. Oh, okay. And they were warned, the people reading the logs that, had, that was outsourced, they were telling them, hey, look, you know, there's, there's something bad here going on. And nobody pays attention, and nobody pays for it except for us. We, we aren't customers anymore. A long time ago, I saw something at, a, at the phone company when I was working there. He used to say, today's customer service depends on you, as the employees came into work. A little big brother, yeah. but still, nice reminder. Now, and they, it changed, and it started saying, today's stock price depends on you. Hmm. And these companies don't see us as customers. They see us as wallets. Well, we, we changed the culture in this country. We went from uh, protecting the, the stakeholders, which includes the employees, mm -hmm. right, to protecting only the shareholders, yes. which yes. is what Equifax exactly. was doing yep. today. Yep. So in the last minute, you guys have any last second rants? Give me 20 seconds of a rant. One thing about the, the Equifax item is we're not customers of Equifax. Right. Mm -hmm. We are their product. Yep. They gather data about us and then they use that to help other folks make decisions about our lives. Should I get a loan? Should I not get a loan? We're Should I be allowed to rent, not rent? We are Equifax's product. I didn't sign mm -hmm. up to be in Equifax's database. Right. But I'm the guy who's going to pay for it. And this right? is a big failure. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. is a bad one. Jeff? And if you're ever going to be active politically, start writing people about this. Mm. Let Congress, senators, people like that, know that you're upset with this, that it's time to put an end to it. Put some laws in place, start regulating them. At yeah. least put penalties in place so it becomes very expensive for companies to be exposed like this. So let me take my last 20 seconds on, here's my rant. I know that businesses don't want to be regulated. They want government out of their space, right? right? But if that's going to occur, then they have to be more responsible and more ethical. Exactly. So if you want to not be regulated, you have to do it right. Otherwise, Uncle Sam's going to come in. Yep. That's <laughs> Thank you, everybody. We're, we're out of time. So, <laughs> and as uh, always, we can go on forever about yes. this stuff. Uh, I love it. Come back next week. We'll have some great stuff for you. Until then, stay safe.